episode 106. This is the business of architecture. Hello, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears, and this is the show where each week I speak with a successful architect, designer, or consultant to discuss tips, strategies, and secrets for running a profitable and impactful architecture practice. Today's show is sponsored by BQE Software, the makers of ArchiOffice. ArchiOffice is the office and project management software built with the needs of architects in mind. And for a limited time, startup firms can get two free seats of ArchiOffice for a year. Go check it out at ArchiOffice.com. Today's episode is all about marketing for architects. This past week, I flew to Toronto, Canada to speak to the Ontario Association of Architects on marketing and architecture firm. I recorded the audio of the presentation so you can hear what I shared with my partner, Eric Barbro. So you're going to get a little peek at what we teach and share in the Architects Marketing Academy. So with that, here's today's show. And just a heads up, this was recorded live. So some of the people in the audience had some questions. Uh, you might not hear it clearly, but I think you'll find this presentation to be very valuable as you look towards attracting more of the right kind of clients and projects and having success as an architect. So with that, here's today's show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and get started here. I want to welcome everyone out this morning. Uh, I just realized that we actually have a, an advantage being in the morning. We don't have the graveyard shift. It's always the one right after lunch that I'm afraid of because then everyone's in the coma. So hopefully everyone's you know still already over. Everyone had their coffee? Hopefully you're working on it. Okay, good. Um, just really quickly, uh, this is the third year I've had the pleasure of speaking here at the OAA, and I'm just curious who in the audience was at my presentation either last year or the year before, just by a raise of hands. It's a good idea here. Okay. No repeat visitors. Uh, everyone else stayed away there. Man, I've already seen that guy. Well, thank you for coming back, by the way. Appreciate it. Uh, my name is Enoch Sears. I'm a, a licensed California architect and also the founder of Business of Architecture, which is a resource for architects to run a more profitable, fulfilling practice. I, I run a podcast and video show, The Business of Architecture, where I interview architects, successful architects and entrepreneurs on running a, a great business. Had a lot of really cool interviewees on there in the past, including uh, Tom Main, Cameron Sinclair. If anyone in the audience would love to be on my show, I'd love, I'm always looking for new guests, architects who want to share a little bit about their life and their past, so you can contact me about that. Uh, joining me today is my, my esteemed colleague and partner, Eric Barbro. Eric Barbro is the leading internet strategist for architects. He's a brilliant guy. It was a pleasure to know him and to work with him. He actually has a long history here uh, in the area. He lived in Toronto for about 18 years. That's right, right Eric. Yeah. And uh, he was actually, in his former life, he was a professional athlete, performed with the world-renowned dance troupe. So maybe if we're lucky today, we'll get to see some... Mm. Some moves. But we are here today to talk to you about the in-demand architect system, how to get more of the right kind of projects and clients. So we're going to show you the different steps that would make up a successful marketing system for an architectural practice. Now what we're going to be showing today can be applied to any practice, whether it's residential, whether it's commercial. They're all basically the same steps. The strategy is the same. It's just the specifics that are going to vary for you. Uh, by raising hands, who in here is residentially focused? Okay, the minority. How about institutional, larger clients? Okay. Uh, how about those of you who are kind of a hybrid that do residential and commercial, smaller firms, large firms? And anyone, 20 people or less in the firm? Okay, so mostly small firms, mostly interestingly uh, uh, institutional type of projects. Great. So you're in the right spot if you're here to learn about the three-step system to become an in-demand architect. Uh, I want to ask you really quickly, I talked about uh, a marketing system. So what we're talking about is a systematic process or a, a sequence of steps that prospective and pers uh, potential clients go through. So everyone goes through the same process, right? Uh, what would be an ideal system for you? If you were just to invent your own marketing system, what would it have and what would it look like? And we want to make this a dialogue, so please raise your hand, let us know. We want to, don't want this to be a one-way conversation. What would the ideal marketing system have for you in your practice? What things would you put into place that would both market your firm, educate your prospects, et cetera? 
Anyone? Okay. So great. So um, so a website, right? And having it constantly updated with interesting, fresh content. Someone said word of mouth. So word of mouth isn't a system. So how does that? How do you turn that into a system? Yeah, that's a great point. Job site signs. Who who here has job site signs? Uses those. Awesome. Looks like. Everyone's already got that checked out. Anyone, anything else part of a marketing system? What else would you include? Yes, sir. So doing some social media, stuff like that. Anyone else? Hold parties? I love it. I like, I like that marketing system. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> uh, there's an architect down in Houston I know. He actually has a mixer every, um, every month. that he, It's grown to 300 people attend, industry professionals. And it's just a happy hour where they get together and they just mix and mingle and his firm puts it on. So it's, it's a great idea. All right. Well, today we're going to show you how to attract and win quality clients and projects without spending all of your time and money networking, marketing, and selling. Who loves selling? You, sir, are in the wrong profession. <laughs> you as well. Great. Well, congratulations. That's definitely an advantage because I saw almost no one raised their hand. I'm the same way. I'm not really a fan of the whole networking and selling. Today we're gonna uh, we're gonna show you three simple steps. We're gonna you're gonna be able to understand how to apply these three steps in your practice, and you're gonna discover. We're gonna share with you a very effective but little used client getting strategy for architects, and we're also gonna show you what we call the missing step in the architect sales process. For some of you, the whole sales process may be the missing step, <laughs> but hopefully not. So who is this for? This is for people who are in charge of business development, people who are firm principals or in charge of bringing in more work for the firm. And who fits that description? Firm owners, people who are looking to maybe get a promotion, bring in some work for the firm. So here's today's agenda. We're going to let me just go back here. So we're gonna, it's broken up into four parts. We're gonna have the intro. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about implementation at the end. In the middle, we're gonna talk about how to, we've broken this marketing um, timeline down into three parts. So attraction, education, and winning the projects. So this is very different than a lot of marketing you might hear from other marketing agencies or marketing firms. And we're going to clarify what that means. So throughout the presentation today, we're going to share what we call game changers, uh, tactics and strategies that if you implement one of them in your practice, it could have a radical difference for how your prospective clients perceive you and how they respond to you. Um, so write these down. The first, there's seven of them throughout the presentation. And the first one is to take intelligent action. So I think this, I think about only 3% of people that attend a presentation actually implement what they learn. So we encourage you to see something today, make yourself just one thing that you think you can improve or you can do differently, write that down and take that intelligent action so you can have a change. Because that's what Eric and I are taking time out of our schedule to do is to bring you some great information you can use to further your practice and your success. So what's the problem here? Uh, if you're a firm principal or owner, you know, you often work 60 to 70 hours per week, probably more. Who works more than that? Oh, thank goodness. Good group. So as a firm principal, you're probably running from deadline to deadline with little marketing, little time for marketing and business development. Anyone identify with this? Okay. I know as a firm owner, I identify with this. You know, it's, it's, I'm so busy doing the projects, getting the work done, that it's sometimes easy to procrastinate and to put off making those business development calls. Doing those things is going to bring in the work. Now, another problem is as architects, we suffer from the feast or famine kind of work cycle. So these are all things that having a systematic process for marketing your firm can help with and can stop. So the best firms, this doesn't happen as much. Now, in the U.S., the median wage for architects, you know, sadly is only about $73,000, and that's for sole practitioners. It's sort of, a, you know, about 70 k um, After having studied architecture for, for years, uh, that's maybe not the best thing. So that's the state of affairs right now. Now, we've surveyed over, over 500 architects, and we found some, something rather shocking or maybe not so shocking that out of all architects, over 80% have no systematic marketing process. 90% uh, have no documented sales process. So out of 10 architects, nine of them, you know, do things by the seat of their pants, fly by wire, which is fine 
uh, if you like spending lots of time doing this kind of stuff. But if you want to spend your time doing great design, then it's important you have a system. And over 40% rely exclusively on referrals, which is great. I personally love referrals because referrals are the best kind of projects we can get, the best kinds of things. Um, unfortunately, when we rely on referrals only, that's a passive way of marketing, so we don't have control. We can't turn it on and off like a faucet. So you've probably had seven years of training and study. Question is, why aren't you treated like a doctor and paid like a lawyer? Anyone here treated like a doctor? I didn't think so. No, me neither. Uh, so what we have is a systematic problem, but it's not really our fault. So from the moment we're in architecture school, the architecture schools, the associations, the magazines, and the, you know, the Starchitect culture contributes this idea of architecture that's all about the celebrity. It's about the fact that architects can't stay under budget. I mean, there's all sorts of false myths out there about what we do. Now, as architects, we tend to think that the problem is the economy. That's why we have these, these ebbs and flows in our work. Uh, perhaps there's too much competition. Perhaps we think that if I do good work, I'll get referrals. And then also, many architects are feeling that people buy based on price. So they're feeling when clients come in, their fees are becoming more and more of an issue, whereas perhaps in the past they weren't. I know that myself, I'm seeing this more and more in my practice. Uh, institutional clients even coming back and saying, hey, can you sharpen the pencil a little bit on those numbers? Uh, kind of a misunderstanding of what goes into an architect's fee. We feel the real issue is, however, that architects, as architects, we're not trained how to market. We generally take whatever comes in, meaning we're not strategic about the kind of projects that we pursue and the projects we accept, and we don't have a system to take care of this. Now, I want you to imagine for a second uh, what we call the in-demand architect or architecture firm. So imagine that you are able to increase your fees without resistance. Imagine you're able to uh, charge premium fees and not have that resistance from your potential clients. So just go, go with me here on a little journey. If you need to close your eyes and just imagine this for a second, maybe you're already here. And if so, congratulations. Imagine that you have clients coming to you and paying you for your initial meeting as opposed to you spending lots of time going out there giving away free advice and basically trying to prove your expertise to your clients before you've ever charged them a dime. Imagine that you have projects lined up in your queue and so you can pick and choose the kind of products you want to work on. How would that affect your life? How would it affect your life to be able to say, hey, this project isn't right for us. This is the one we want to go from and accept this. How would that make your life and your practice different? Well, today we're going to share with you the seven game changers that will hopefully give you a sleepless night and give you some new information to empower you. Uh, is there anyone here who's tried marketing and doesn't believe it works for architects? Wow. Anyone here believe it doesn't work for mar architects? We have a room full of believers. <laughs> All right. <laughs> class dismissed. Has anyone here tried, tried active marketing? This is a raise of hands. How many of you have actively done any marketing? Okay. All right, a few hands. How many of you can raise your hands? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sheena. Um, how many here hate being salesy? I think we, we already hit on that before with the how many love sailing was like the inverse. <laughs> yeah, do not like that. So we also do not like being salesy, and we encourage you not to be. We're going to show you an alternate way to market your practice that actually gets clients to want to communicate with you and takes the onus off of you to be, to be salesy or pushy. Uh, you may have heard this before. If I'm a good architect, clients will beat a path to my door, perhaps. Uh, anyone here believe that if they do good, doing good work is enough? Come on, don't be shy. Well, um, I recently interviewed Frank Carmen on my show. He's a great architect based out of South Carolina. And he said this. He said, yeah, you know, my advice is to just do good work and people will come to you. But after talking to him, I learned that he's a fascinating communicator. He has tons of network. He gets out there and he talks to people. So a lot of times people will say this, but in the fact, when you look behind the scenes, there's a whole lot more going on there. It's not just doing good work. And we know that. So... Take example, you know, McDonald's definitely doesn't make the best hamburgers, at least not my opinion. I don't go there for good food. But they're all over the world, and the reason why is because they're probably the best marketers of hamburgers and fast food. 
right? Same thing with Pizza Hut, you know, they don't make the best pizza, and yet they're one of the most successful pizza businesses because they know how to market. So we want to give you guys and ladies the tools here to be able to market your firm so that you can grow your business. All right, uh, just want to take a second here. For those of you who said you did some marketing and I'd like to know what was your biggest marketing mistake? So let's just take down the walls for a second. Has anyone made a big marketing mistake that they can share with us? Uh, perhaps it was not marketing at all. Perhaps it was spending a lot of money on a website that didn't bring any leads or was outdated. Uh, perhaps you took out an ad in an industry publication and it fell flat. Anyone want to share their experience with us? Anyone? I see some heads nodding. Sir? Industry publication. Okay. And, okay, so you spent a good sum of money advertising in an industry publication and got zero results. Okay. Great. Anyone else? Okay, so advertising, yellow pages didn't work, uh, websites outdated. I mean, it's hard to keep those things up to date. Anyone else want to share something? In one of our previous presentations, one guy said, he said, uh, he said, I, he did a strip tease for public, for, for develop. Yeah, that's what he said. Do you remember that guy? Yeah. yeah, I'm dead serious. I'm like, that is the biggest marketing mistake ever. <laughs> I don't know exactly what went into that, but so anyways, uh, Eric's going to take it over from here and, and talk a little bit further about uh, our first step, which is the, the client. Um... Oh, go ahead. All right. All right. Thanks, Enoch. Yeah. So uh, let's see what we can do to change, go beyond those mistakes and the inaction or the just the uh, fear of action. You know, I think that uh, probably all of us are a little bit wary of doing things if you're not sure it's going to work or if you don't feel you have a strategy that's proven. Um, just rather put that off, focus on doing the work, doing the design work. So we believe that you only need three marketing systems, and that's why we call this a three-step um, system. You need to take people from not being aware of you, basically looking around for the firm that, that uh, will solve the issues, uh, help them get the design, the, the new home, the new hospital, um, become aware of you, and ultimately to trust you and want to hire you. So you need a system that will attract the inquiries, a system that will educate the prospective clients not only about who you are and what you offer, but also about um, the situation with their project that they may not understand as well as they could, and a system that ultimately takes them through the process uh, so that you can win their business. Now, it doesn't happen by accident. You need to have a systematic process, the right ingredients, much like you know baking a cake, making um, any any type of uh, you know complex product, the right ingredients and the right sequence. Now here is a diagram that we're going to be talking about during the course of today's presentation that simplifies the marketing process. Now I mean it may not look super simple, but it is broken up into some discrete parts, and I'm going to give you just a tiny description right now, and then we'll go into some of the parts uh, uh, later. So you see on the uh, left of your screen, lead sources. So this is basically where people come from. They can come from referrals, of course. It can come from networking, uh, perhaps your website, advertising, job site signs, a lot of different places that people can find out that you exist, that can uh, learn that you're a possible option for them. Now we have a uh, process that we're going to be describing today that uh, has a funny name, the monkey's fist, and you'll learn what that's about in a little bit, but basically it's some educational material that can attract people because it provides a useful answer uh, to some of the problems or, or questions that they have. A follow-up system, I think we all understand that follow-up is important, but what does that mean? Phone call, well, we all deal with phone calls all the time, but do have a systematic way to approach an incoming phone call that guides people through the process that you'd prefer rather than just waiting for them to say, okay, so tell me about you know, your background and have you done projects like this before, etc. Now, qualification is an interesting part of this. Do you want to work with everyone who calls? Well, you know, if you're hungry, if you have no work at all and they have any money to pay you, maybe you'll be forced to. But there is a place in your business, and I'm sure that you've experienced this at some points along your career, maybe a lot, where you pick and choose and you decide if the client is really the right one for you, so you're qualifying them. The shock and awe box is a part of the process where you're actually sharing information with them that actually puts them in a very receptive state 
for when you do have the meeting, when you do actually sit down and talk with them. We're going to be talking about the LCC, which is uh, an acronym for the Low Commitment Consultation, and it fills in a missing step between the free meeting and the paid, we'll have you do our project. And of course, ultimately, we have the project up at the top. That's what we all want, is more good projects, more of the ideal ones for your particular practice. And then you see the ultimate referral system. Do you have a system that brings in referrals, that encourages that? I mean, it's a natural part of our business to be able to um, get referrals from past clients or colleagues, uh, professional uh, sources, but to have a system for that. And the circle of love in the middle is a way of keeping in touch with people. It's uh, newsletters and other regular communication that keeps you top of mind. So that's sort of a very brief description of the pieces here. Now, this diagram is something that you can get. Obviously, you can take some notes while we're going through this. But if you'd like to get it, we have a, a way that you can do this. Uh, how many of you have a, a phone in your pocket right now? All right. Uh, I'd like to encourage you uh, to SMS, to send a text message, just the word architect, to this number. And what will happen is there will be a response that basically says, great, thanks, you're uh, glad to know that you're interested. And then you type in, it'll ask you to put in your email address. And you'll get not only this diagram, but also a report that we prepared on the number one client getting strategy for architects. So this is something that I think will open your eyes to one of the key uh, methods that you can establish your presence and bring in more business. Does so, anyone try that out? Yeah, let's see. Does it work? <laughs> Enoch just set it up. Does anyone want to be a test of the guinea pig? Okay, All right, you got it? You got a response? All right, great. So uh, basically, uh, you'll get that sent via email, and we'll be able to stay in touch with you just with regular communication about marketing strategies for architects. So again, we're going to be talking about the three systems how to attract clients, how to educate them, and that's an interesting way to think about it because you're not trying to persuade them directly, you're trying to educate them first and then be in the position where persuasion is easy. They're pre-sold to work with you. So we're going to be looking at first the, the uh, part one here, which has to do with how you attract and bring in the clients to be interested. Now. I believe that when you do this properly, you'll get 10 times as many phone calls and inquiries as you've ever had without spending a ton of money, without putting in a lot of money in advertising. Um, this is something that will give you the opportunity to not worry about where your next project is coming from. Now, how many of you would like to be in the position where you don't have to wake up in the middle of the night thinking, God, when that project is over, what am I going to be doing? You know, that's something that... Uh, yeah, I think um, <clears throat> all of us have been through there. Uh, now, by the way, I've, I'm not an architect, but I've been working with architects since 1989. So if you do your math, it's about over 25 years. Um, I started uh, as a technology consultant uh, uh, helping architects with uh, the original BIM software, Archicad. Uh, but I've been working with architects for a long time. And uh, my brother is a fellow of the AIA, so it's in, in the family blood there. Now, in terms of having more prospects, I think we'd all like to be able to charge higher fees. If you're in a position where you don't have to take every job and where you can say no to the people who are asking you for the, you know, can't you do any better with the pricing, you know, you'll be uh, more confident as you are facing those clients. And in fact, not needing selling is a good position to be in where they're coming to you asking to work with you. Now, there are two problems that I think all of you face, all of us face, is not enough leads. Uh, whoops, uh, and also maybe you have people contacting you who are just not qualified. They're not the right type of client. So how do you deal with that? So if you if you have a st uh, if you basically don't have enough leads coming in, then you are facing commodity pricing. People saying, you know, I'm going to this other architect or these five other architects. You know, give me the best price you can do. Do they really understand the value that you bring to the table? Do they see you as somehow different? than the others, or do they see you as just one more of the same commodity? Now, if you don't have enough work, then you have to you know, basically accept whatever comes your, your way, and so the work on your boards may not be ideal. And the feast or famine um, is certainly an issue. And how many of you give away more advice than you'd like to for free? So raise your hand. OK, be honest. Be honest here. All right, I think we all need to give away some advice. We all need to establish our expertise, be helpful to people. 
um, to put them in the position where they say, you know, I'd like to talk to you further, but giving too much and being forced to do that is not a good position. So if you can get the ideal clients to call you and not have to focus on selling, but actually move yourself up the power pyramid, which is an interesting term, from being a commodity where you're providing a service that everyone else can do to being an expert that is somehow a little differentiated, to being an authority, or even possibly being a celebrity like my colleague here. Um, Inik is a celebrity now as having set up the business of architecture, website, and podcast by providing regular information. And if you think about it, Inik is an architect just like all of you, but he's set himself up as an authority simply by providing useful information on a regular basis to other architects. You can set yourself up as an expert and an authority by providing that useful information. Now, this is um, uh, using a tool and a method that we call the monkey's fist. So what is the monkey's fist? This is a way to get around traditional marketing, where in traditional marketing, if you spent some money and you put an ad up, and we've had a couple of you say that you spent money on ads in, in publications that didn't do any good. Well, if you look here, you know, 50 years ago or 60 years ago with Ronald Reagan there, um, you know, if you just spent some money on ads, you could be in front of people, you would get some recognition, your brand would be known, um, and you'd, you know, you could say you get famous just by having a, an ad. But nowadays, 2014, 2015, uh, just so much media, so many advertising messages, just so much going on um, that the message is drowned out. And it can be pretty expensive, just not effective for m almost any architect. Now, th the issue here is that all of you probably are in the position where what you're saying to people is, here's my website. If you're looking for an architect, consider hiring us. So your, your request is, hire me. Here's an ad, a series of ads, yellow pages, for perhaps. Here's who we are, 25 years experience. We do these types of projects. When you're ready to hire an architect, call us. Same thing with online advertising. Hire me. Just basically, here's who we are. Here's how to get in touch with us and hire us. Now, the issue is, in regards to this, that a buyer or someone who's going to hire an architect is going to go through a number of phases. They're going to start by gathering information and ideas about their project, whether it's a new home or a hospital, whether it's ideas for sustainable design. They're going to be thinking about what they need. Then they're going to, at a certain point, get a little closer and need some specific advice about, well, what's feasible on my property? What's the budget going to be like? Um, you know, what's the process? I don't really know exactly how this all goes. And ultimately, they'll be ready to hire an architecture firm. Now, the problem is that if you're talking to people and just saying, hey, we're a great firm, hire us, you're only talking to the relatively small part of that market that's really ready to hire. And you're competing with all the other architecture firms that are doing the same thing. Now, if you can provide an offer, if you can provide information for diagnostic uh, information, for, for example, a feasibility study or some other type of um, information that would help a person when they're ready for specific advice, you're going to be reaching a little broader market, a little earlier in the process, maybe weeks or months ahead of when they're ready to actually sit down with an architect. And if you can go even further and provide education when they're in the idea gathering phase, you can establish your presence. They can find out about you and your firm, and you can be in touch with them months or even potentially years ahead of when they're ready to hire. And very few architects doing that. So you're now talking to a broader market with less competition. So what's the monkey's fist? See this big uh, ship here and what's that ball that's on the, the left side? Look at the big uh, ropes. They're the size of a man's leg. They have to be pretty big to uh, you know, hold on to a big ship like that. Well, how do you think that they get from that ship to the shore? They can't bring the ship up and bump against the shore and drop it down and have people reach they're too big. They will throw a small line, sort of like a clothesline, with this ball at the end of it. It's a sort of cord wrapped around a, a metal ball. So they can throw this to the longshoreman who grabs it. It's attached to this clothesline type of um, a rope. And it's attached to the heavy hauser, those heavy ropes. And they pull it. 
And when you know they keep pulling it, they get the big rope, and then they tie it around the bollards and are able to bring the boat in. So think about that. That's a way to send something that's really easy to bring in something that's really important, valuable, and hard to, <clears throat> to make happen. Now, this is a funny image here. It's a door-to-door -door salesman from you know somewhere in the 20th century when people used to knock on doors. The typical salesman might have a success rate of 4%. So in other words, they knock on 25 doors and one person would buy. You have to do a lot of cold calling to do that. Someone had the bright idea of saying, Madam, instead of saying, would you like to buy our coffee? Madam, I'd like to offer you this free sample of our coffee with our compliments. The only thing is, I'll come back in a week and just ask you how you like it. And if you like it, you know, feel free to order some from us. Well, it's a little bit harder to say no to an offer of, you know, free coffee or something uh, attractive like that. So their success rate was much higher. Now, coming back a week later, the next step might be to say, if you like that coffee, I'd be happy to take your order for it, and I have another free gift if you place that order. So making it a multi-step process, providing something free and easy at the beginning that gets people engaged. So the success rate went up to 40%. Rather remarkable difference with that one change in strategy. Now, what can you as an architect offer that would be the equivalent of that free coffee? Well, it could be a free report, information. So here, for example, one of our clients in New Zealand has a report on the seven mistakes people make when renovating. So think about it. If, if someone is sort of not very experienced with renovation, but they have a home that needs updating, maybe a new kitchen, maybe a second floor addition, any, anything, they might be very concerned about the mistakes. You know, well, I've heard people, you know, go through and their budget has been blown through the roof. Um, or, you know, they, they do something and they find out that it wasn't to permit, or who knows what it is. Um, this report that this particular architect, um, Mona Quinn, did in uh, New Zealand has been very effective at bringing in people who are in the early stages thinking about a renovation. In fact, when she was featured in a newspaper article, <clears throat> she was, uh, it started to be called the character home specialist in New Zealand. So character homes, you know, older heritage homes, that have very specific requirements, you know, the vernacular, uh, uh, the building materials, etc. So this free report has gotten her many, many leads. I think she went to one trade show um, and got 120 leads. Was that right um, from that? Or was, I think there was a trade show and there was a newspaper article where that worked. Now here's an example of a commercial type of offer. This is one of our clients um, who does broadcast studios. And so he's created a piece about how to plan a successful corporate broadcast studio. Now, who would be interested in this? Well, the football teams or other um, uh, local channels that are thinking that they need to upgrade their facilities. They're doing some broadcast work, and they want to have a better studio. And he's an expert on that. So he's providing some information. It's a whole report. This is just one page uh, out of the report that these ideal clients for him will go, you know, I'd like to get that report because I'd like to know more about our options here. So instead of saying hire me, there's a, an educational offer. So you can see that in contrast down at the bottom. So some people who are new to the process of hiring an architect, uh, they're saying we really want to make our custom home. We bought some land, but they don't really understand how to hire an architect. So this is a report that might attract those ideal clients for a business that's looking for custom home clients. Here's another type of offer, a one-page flowchart. So think about how many of your clients are a little vague on the process of getting approval or how long it takes to you know, go through the different stages of design and, and uh, approval and bids and construction, etc. This little flowchart could be very interesting to those type clients. Now, if you're doing institutional work, working with hospitals, and they've got a committee, and they've gone through this before, then maybe this wouldn't be the case. But in fact, they might have some other things that uh, a little flowchart might help clarify. Now, who knows this information? I'm assuming all of you, with your training and experience, are experts. And experts in one area, or perhaps several, many different areas, far more expert, expert than your clients. So. Anything that you put together can potentially be seen as, wow, I didn't know that, I need to know that, 
and can be very attractive to them. So we've all talked about you know, putting signs on your job site. Well, here's an interesting one. Instead of just saying, this project by such and such a firm, here's our phone number, on the job site sign, want to renovate your historic building? Free guide to building in Santa Fe explains how to gain city approval. The background on the historic districts and the Santa Fe's diverse architectural heritage. Just go to this website and you'll get that. So think about it. Someone going past in Santa Fe, this project, and saying, ah, oh, it looks like a nice, whoa, look at that. And they have a project or potential project that would be similar. They would find this very interesting. So here is some bait for that type of fish, for that type of target market that would be very appropriate. For the people who are going by who don't have a need for it, they're not going to call. But for the ones who are thinking, you know, I'd like to know more about how we can work with our historic property. So you can go from selling, where you may feel a little awkward, like, uh, yeah, well, we, we can do that type of project, and we'd love to work with you, to educating. Oh, that, yeah, we've seen that problem before. Here's, here's how we would approach it. Now, one of the problems with educating is, you know, here is someone in a classroom, is it does take time. However, think about what I just described to you. A booklet or an online report or a video that answers certain questions doesn't take any time. Now, it's not quite as direct touch as talking to someone, but it can be leveraged. You can be out there day and night with the same information that is educating people. Now, whoever educates the market can own the market. Now, this is an interesting concept. If you think about when you go for certain types of information um, professionally, who do you think of for learning about certain types of uh, industry information, whether it's for sustainable design or hospitals or retail? You know, there are different publications, perhaps different um, experts, speakers, uh, writers that are sharing good information. And, you know, you would respect them. I mean, we all do. So how can you be in the position where people say, you know what, I want to work with Enoch because Enoch's, he's awesome. You know, he just shares such great information. So instead of trying to sell people, we say, how can I help you? So do you want help with your problem? And it's actually a little gift. So instead of saying, can I get your contract? Can I get you to sign here? It's, uh, here, would you, would you like this coffee, please? Yeah. Um, so rather than waste money and time selling, let's just help people. Let's really focus on helping people. It's a much more comfortable place. I mean, what am I doing right now? I'm helping you. I hope you find this helpful. So this is the educational offer. It entices your clients to come to you. You build trust and confidence. They say, you know, that was really good information. This firm uh, looks like they know what they're talking about. No one else may be talking to them when they're in that early stage. You have six to 12 months in some cases to stay in touch with them, send them another newsletter, send them another report um, that uh, you know builds up that contact. So, Enoch, I think you have the next part of this presentation. Is that right? Where we're going to talk about when you succeed with this beyond your expectations, how can you automate the process? All right, and that is the end of today's episode. I think I'll go ahead and break it there. Uh, tune in next week for the exciting conclusion of our of our presentation. Some good material in the second part. For those of you who want to get the marketing flowchart that we talked about during this presentation, that phone number is 415-528-7403. So go ahead and write that down, 415-528-7403. Give that a try. Let me know if you get the uh, that marketing flowchart. Uh, go ahead and text architect to that number. So text architect to 415-528-7403. And that's a wrap for another show about the business of architecture. If you enjoyed today's show, please go to iTunes and leave a review. There are two reasons to do this. First, it encourages me to continue making free content for you to run a fulfilling and profitable practice. And secondly, it allows others to find this content inside of iTunes so that they can benefit as well. 
for free resources for running an architecture practice that is both fun, flexible, and profitable, visit businessofarchitecture.com and click the join button to unlock your account to Business of Architecture Insider. As a member, you'll have access to free tools and resources to help you get more clients, boost profitability, start a firm, and much more. Until next week, this has been the Business of Architecture. The views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5, Do It Anyway.